Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD. And yes, we are finally going to review the Panasonic Toughbook 55, which is a solid, sturdy, rugged laptop, which weighs around 4.6 pounds. But again, uh, this machine is designed for you to build it the way you want it for your workflow. And the way that I actually have it configured, it's weighing around 6.15 pounds. Uh, I have two batteries, I have the graphics expansion pack as well as the input output pack. So with all that stuff inserted into this machine, it's going to weigh around 6.15 pounds. So again, uh, weighing wise is between 4.6 to 6.15 depending on what type of modules you have installed on this machine. Now for the thickness, it's around 1.29 inches, so again, it's really solid. Uh, it weighs a lot, but it is a strong machine. Like I mentioned before, the Panasonic Toughbook 55 is a machine that you design it the way you want it to work for you. Uh, it has a lot of ports and features. The standard ports that this machine will come with, if you have the laptop to the point that you are able to open it up like this, right? On your right hand side, uh, you're going to get the, the pen which is a cool thing to have, but I did not find myself using it because you can't really convert this laptop into a tablet mode. So this for me was kind of useless. Uh, but next to that, you have a combo audio jack, which actually allows you to hook up a headphone or a headphone with a mic system. You got your SD card reader slot. Uh, and also you have one 3.1 always on charging USB port, your type C connection, which actually allows you to hook up in an external monitor. So you can have dual monitors. And then next to that, you have your ethernet port or your RJ 45. And last but not least on your right hand side, you have your power port. Now in the back, the standard ports that you will have automatically when you purchase this device is an additional 3.1 USB and an HDMI. So that allows you to hook up another external monitor. So you can have two monitors in total. For me, I actually hooked it up with the input output pack, which actually gives me a VGA port, a serial port, and a new port that I had never seen before. I had to do a little Googling to it, but this port right here is actually called a rugged Fisher port. On the left-hand side of the Panasonic Toughbook 55, you don't really have any ports, but you do have slots to insert expansion packs. So the Toughbook 55, you have so many ways to configure it with the expansion packs that Panasonic provides you. I believe they have so far around nine to 10 packs. I have about eight of them. And the ones that I found extremely useful for my workflow was definitely the GPU pack, the input output pack, and definitely the extra expansion pack for the battery. That is a plus. Uh, they do provide you like a DVD, a Blu-ray, again, they don't provide you, you actually have to purchase these expansion packs. But uh, I believe the Blu-ray, the RFID, the smart reader card, the extra solid state drive, those are all expansion packs that you could purchase and to upgrade and to build your Tough 55 the way that you want it. Now, you have to be extremely careful and think about which expansion packs you want on this machine. For example, I inserted the GPU pack on this particular machine, but I can't use the Blu-ray or I can use the DVD and I'm out of luck using the solid state drive because you know that slot that I inserted the GPU pack it's gone. If you want to use the RFID or the smart reader card but you definitely want that extra battery life you're out of luck because that slot once you insert that expansion pack for the battery you're done. So when customizing and making this machine adaptable for your workflow you have to sit down and actually think about which expansion packs are for you. All right, so let's open up the Toughbook 55. But before we do that, uh, one of the things I like about the Toughbook 55 is the handle. It makes it extremely easy to carry around if you have all those expansion packs inserted. Uh, for me, I have the GPU, the input output, and the additional battery. This guy weighs around 6.15 pounds. Having this handle to carry around makes it pretty easy. One of the other things that I like about this is that the LED indicators, which is right on the handle or next to the handle, uh, gives you indication of like the power and the two batteries. On the Toughbook 55, it has like a latch. So it's not one of those things that you can actually lift up. It's like locked in there. So you got this latch right here. You got to pick it up and hold it down and it's boom, cool. At the very top of the display, you have a 
full HD 1080p webcam. And it's also infrared, which allows you to log in using Windows Hello. So I'm gonna power this guy on. The power is actually located at the upper left corner. And next to the power button, you have LED indicators for your hard drive, your SD, uh, your caps, your number lock, and also your insert lock. So right now it's looking for me. So I'm gonna slide this guy to your left. Gonna face it. And let's see if it picks up my face. There you go, so we're logged into the machine. All right, so let's talk about the keyboard on the Toughbook 55. Uh, I had no issues with the keyboard. The distance between each key is around a quarter and a dime, which measures around 0 0.11 inches. Uh, I had no issues typing with it. Uh, very responsive. The keys itself feels raised up. I felt like I was typing on a ThinkPad from Lenovo. So that's how well the keyboard layout is designed. Now, it is backlit. And one of the cool things about this is that Panasonic actually gives you a utility to change the color. My favorite color is green. One of the things I did not like about the Toughbook 55 is the trackpad. For me, it felt kind of small. If you want to know the measurement, if you take two quarters and two dimes, which measures around 3.33 inches uh, lengthwise, uh, for me, it just feels kind of small. Not too much real estate for me to do anything. Uh, I had to use a wireless or Bluetooth mouse or a wired USB mouse to actually navigate half the time. I was using this machine for photo editing and video editing, so I definitely need to get like quickness, but using a trackpad wasn't the way to go. They do provide you a left click and a right click button, which is nice. Now the speakers on the Toughbook 55 are actually located right here, super loud. Panasonic actually advertised around 92 decimals on the speaker level, and it's true. It is super loud when I was watching movies or listening to videos, it actually goes up to 92.5. Now for the display on the Toughbook 55, again, it is 14 inches, full HD with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It is touchscreen. They do provide you this nice little pen, but I really didn't see myself using it. I think you're gonna see me use it now on the video, but I really didn't use the pen at all. Now for the brightness on this guy, if you get the touchscreen one, full HD, it's gonna be a thousand nicks. We're gonna hold the function key and we're gonna do F2. This is the brightest that you can actually go, a thousand. And let's go all the way down, F1. And this is the darkest. Again, all the way up, the brightest. Panasonic is actually advertising that the display is a thousand nicks, so that's pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about the performance, battery life, and basically the specs on the Toughbook 55. Uh, so let's take care of the specs. So right now, if I right click on the taskbar, let's go to task manager and let's go to performance. Let's open this guy up a little bit on the CPU. I'm going to right click on it, change the graph to logical processor. I've been testing out the Intel Core i5-8365U processor with a clock speed of 1.60 gigahertz. Uh, four cores, eight logical processors, one socket. Base speed is around 1.90. It works extremely well when I was doing a lot of photo editing. I was able to edit 4K uh, without creating proxies, but I did have some issues when I inserted the GPU pack. And the reason why is because of driver issues, but once I got that stuff squared off, everything was working kind of flawless. For memory, uh, I have the eight gig model one, but I think the max memory is about 64 gigs of memory that you can actually install on the Toughbook 55. For hard drive space, I have the Samsung uh, 256 gig solid state drive. The max cap is around one terabyte. And for the GPU is a Ultra HD Graphics 620. Now once you insert your GPU pack on the Toughbook 55, you're actually installing a Radeon Pro WX 4150 graphics processor with four gigs. Now, once I inserted that, it made everything kind of smooth for me when I was editing within Adobe Premiere. One of the issues that I had was the graphics drivers. Got to make sure you got the correct ones and install it. Once you install it, reboot the machine. Everything is kind of working flawless with no issues. Now, the specifications are there for this machine. The machine is able to go up to an i7 processor. 64 gigs of memory, hard drive space is about a terabyte, and you're stuck with the Radeon WX4151 for what I know so far. So 
in the future, I'm assuming that Panasonic is probably going to upgrade the GPU pack to something a little higher. But for now, the WX4150 is, it works well. Now the battery life on the Toughbook 55, that what shocked me. I said to myself, like, everyone out in the market, you need to follow what Panasonic is doing. Don't get me wrong, the machine is pretty solid, it's pretty heavy. The battery packs are pretty large, so that's kind of like the reason why you get a lot of juice. So I ran PC Mark 10. I ran three tests. The first test was basically modern office uh, utilities, like using Word, Excel, PowerPoint, going online, blah, blah, blah. The battery, one single battery lasts 13 hours, okay? And Panasonic is actually advertising that one battery supply is gonna last around 20 hours, and if you add the additional one, it's gonna give you 40 plus hours. Now, I ran the test again, but I did only video, just playing a lot of video, 18 hours. And then the last test was basically leaving it alone, idle 26 hours with one battery. I took it home, left the power supply at the lab, and I had both batteries on, and this machine was, it was strong. Uh, it definitely will last, I would say, five days straight without charging it up. It really depends on how you're using it. Uh, it, it, for me, it lasts around three and a half days because I did have the backlit kind of all bright. I did have the brightness all the way up on the display. I changed the battery settings for my for my workflow. But if you change it and kind of optimize it for the battery usage, you can actually get this machine running for 40 to 48 hours straight with both batteries on. With a single battery, 24 hours, which is it works. This is a strong, strong machine. I, I feel like a lot of these laptops in the market right now should kind of like steal the formula that Panasonic is using for their battery life. Okay, so we went over the specifications. Performance is excellent for my workflow. Uh, battery life is epic awesome. But the price tag, the price tag is pretty high. I don't see this laptop, you know, living in a, you know, home for an average consumer. Uh, retail starting price for this guy is $20.99, and that's with no expansion packs. You're going to get the basic ports. If you want the expansion ports like the GPU, the input-output pack, the extra battery, the RFID, the smart card, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, it's going to cost you around, oh, wow, I would say four to five grand. Because I'm assuming, I'm only assuming that each expansion pack would be between $100 to $200, depending on which one you get, Right? So it's really pricey. When I was doing my testing on the Toughbook 55 noise level, I didn't really realize or notice too much noise. There was a little baby noise at the back, but not too much to the point it was driving me crazy. Heating. Uh, for me, it didn't really feel like it got really hot. It did get hot around this location right here, definitely around this location, but it wasn't to the point that it was driving me nuts. I did use it on my lap a couple of times, but it was nice and cool. It's not to the point that it would burn my lap when I was using it. I did have some problems with the Toughbook 55, especially with the GPU pack. Uh, I know the engineers from Panasonic told me like, insert the pack, install the drivers, reboot. I did all that stuff, but I had to do more troubleshooting uh, behind the scenes uh, because the drivers that I got wasn't working and it was causing a lot of problems when I was doing video editing and it, it just caused a lot of problems. Eventually I got it up and running by going to the AMD site, finding the correct drivers, installing that, rebooting the machine and good to go. Uh, I still had a couple more issues with the machine doing a blue screen of death. Uh, it kind of gave me the blue screen and then it was like trying to analyze itself and it rebooted. Uh, I finally got, I caught the camera and I recorded when it happened to me because it happened about four or five times when I was like testing this stuff out. I don't know if it was like a driver conflict or what, but the last time it happened to me, uh, the only thing that I plugged in was an external monitor and all of a sudden I got the blue screen of death and it popped up. So I feel like it's an operating system thing but I am definitely going to do a deployment video with you guys. I'm gonna show you guys how to configure the MDT in your SCCM server to deploy your operating system using uh, this as our dummy machine. So I'm pretty excited about that. Overall, I'm happy to get a new laptop in the lab. Finally, we got a 
a laptop that's not a Lenovo laptop uh, to do a review for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review on the Panasonic Toughbook 55. If you have any comments or concerns or if I didn't touch base on anything on the machine that you would like me to touch base, let me know at the comment section. I would definitely do a follow-up video. I know a couple of you guys want me to like do a drop test on this because uh, Panasonic does advertise you could drop it around, I believe, three feet or something like that and it could survive. So I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Overall, hopefully you guys enjoy. And don't forget about hitting that like button. Also subscribe and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.